In this alteration video, I'm gonna show you how to use a cheese slicer to make facets on the outside of your work. I think it's important to buy a cheese slicer that is adjustable and has a wheel here. You can go anywhere from an eighth of an inch all the way to a half inch thick. Generally speaking, a quarter inch is a really good thickness for facets. I'm just gonna use two pounds of clay. You can buy a cheese slicer at any, seems like almost any grocery store. It shouldn't be too much more than $10. Some cheese slicers have um, a squiggly wire, which can be nice for making different cuts. I think it's really important when fastening to leave the walls exceptionally thick. So I'm not gonna do much pulling. I'm gonna make my curved base. This is gonna be a little bowl. Go ahead and collar the top in. And all I'm gonna do here is gather up some of this material on the bottom and just do a, a slight pull. All I'm doing is making sure that the, the wall is even and thick. I'm going to sharpen the top down. I can feel with my middle finger and thumb that this is basically even all the way down. I like to pre-undercut the bottom. Just get some of that material out of the way. And at this point, I'm basically finished with the pulling. Every technique in ceramics takes practice. And fastening is no exception. To make it easier, I'm gonna show you a pretty easy way to go about making your facets. So I'm gonna take the bumper of the material and start at the top and put the bumper to the material and just make a mark. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my corners. I'm gonna do that all the way around. You can see I've made six sides and it looks like it's gonna work out. If, it, if there's a gap in between these corners, you wanna go ahead and make this a little bigger or vice versa. So once you feel like it's mapped out and ready to go, I like to go ahead and just put the bumper to the material and maintain contact all the way down. You can see you get a nice little chunk of clay that comes off. Match up your corners. Looks like this is working out nicely. You can see I already a completely change the characteristic of the exterior of your, your bowl. So it really look, it looks angular, it's, it's uneven, and it's, um, it's quite beautiful. So what we're looking at here is a very uneven wall thickness. It's much thinner here than it is on the corner. And so what I like to do is compress that rim down. Now I'm no longer gonna touch the outside whatsoever. But I'm gonna take my finger my right hand and just go ahead and roll this finger over the rim. This is going to give you a very what we call like an alive edge. It's going to, it's going to give you sort of that um, almost natural curve. It's also going to thicken the rim down and allow me to stretch this material from the inside out. To do this you can use a rib, you can use your fingers. Some people like to use a wooden rib or a spoon on the inside. I've just gotten the habit of using my left hand, almost like I'm pulling, but I'm not touching on the outside. I like to do it at a relatively high rate of speed. And start at the bottom and work your way up. 
Remember, do not touch the outside. The first few times you try this, you might get a rip right in between. I also think it's nice to clean up that curve with a, a flexible metal rib, rubber rib, any kind of rib you're comfortable with. Now you can see this material is actually starting to stretch and turn a little bit. My, what once was a nice straight edge is now turning just slightly because of the, the resistance of the material and the friction you put on there with your hand or rib. Go ahead and chamois these this, this rim. Just let the chamois bounce up and down. This is going to emphasize the a nice luscious rim. These pots can be trimmed normally on the wheel or they can be hand trimmed. But just like any technique, with practice, it can be, be very useful. We'll go ahead and get this leather hard and trim this up later. Faceted bowls pose quite a few trimming challenges for people. We have all these edges, we have uneven wall thickness, and a lot of extra clay on the base. So it's important to center the best you can. Since there's really no round edge except for the bottom, I just focus on this and get as close as I possibly can. That looks pretty good. I draw a couple lines like normal. I really want to accentuate the form with these faceted bowls, so I'm just going to trim a nice little tall foot on these. Apply pressure down so it doesn't move when you press the clay in, be in between the uh, wheel head on the rim. Since it's very uneven, you really have to hang on even tighter than normal. I like to support with my left, my left thumb, and it's almost like you're driving down a bumpy road. It's like you know, just kind of, you just have to hang on. You can see all the tools bouncing up and down a little bit, and that can end up making marks and being quite beautiful. Let's have a look. You can see how this, it's almost a continuation of the line all the way through. Now these are very sculpted forms, so I don't really necessarily want to trim a machine foot on here. I'm going to go down just a little ways. And sometimes I'll just hack a chunk out of here. It's like we had an air pocket in there. I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that out. Sometimes by moving the tool down quickly, 
and holding on tight. You can get a nice chiseled edge out of here, but in this case, I have a little, little air pocket in there. Sometimes I want to check, see what's going on, if it goes all the way through. If not, you can just easily just fill that. Just took a little bit of wet clay, just pack it in there. Remove your coils. And you can see we have a really nice, lively little bowl. Lots of, lots of life.